In this animation, we will review the physiology of a cardiac action potential. We will also highlight the effects of different antiarrhythmic drugs. Let's zoom in on the heart. The heart is a beating muscle. Each beat is stimulated by electrical signals that pass through the myocardium. The primary pacemaker of the heart is the sinoatrial SA node, located at the upper border of the right atrium. Action potentials originate in the SA node and then spread through the two atria, causing them to contract. Once they reach the atrioventricular node, they continue down the bundle of His, which divides within the interventricular septum into right and left bundle branches. From the apex, action potentials are then carried by Purkinje fibers to the ventricular walls. Let's take a closer look at the myocardium to show the events occurring at the cell membrane level. Under resting conditions, the inner surface of the cell membrane is negatively charged, whereas the outer surface is positively charged. This difference in electrical charge across the membrane is referred to as the resting membrane potential. We will now review the action potential of a ventricular myocyte, a fast response type of muscle. The action potential of a ventricular myocyte occurs in five phases, numbered 0 to 4. Phase 4 is the resting membrane potential. It's about minus 85 to minus 95 millivolts in normal cardiac muscle and is the membrane potential when the cell is not being stimulated. Let's take a look at the cell membrane during phase four. The membrane potential at rest is largely determined by potassium permeability, with the inward rectifying channel, labeled as IK1, being the predominant open channel during this phase. Sodium-potassium ATPase pumps help maintain the electrical gradient across the membrane. For every two potassium ions these pumps transport inside the cell, three sodium ions exit the cell. Once electrically stimulated, a myocyte proceeds to phase zero. Phase zero is the rapid depolarization phase. This phase is the result of fast sodium channels opening. This causes a rapid influx of sodium that induces a reversal of transmembrane voltage. The inner surface now becomes positively charged, and the outer surface negatively charged. We will now proceed to phase one. Phase one consists of slight repolarization. This is due to the inactivation of fast sodium channels and a transient rapid efflux of potassium. Phase two is the plateau phase of the cardiac action potential. It is sustained by a balance between slow inward movement of calcium through L-type calcium channels and an outward movement of potassium through slow delayed rectifier potassium channels, labeled here as IK. Phase 3 is the repolarization of the action potential. During Phase 3, the L-type calcium channels close, while the slow delayed rectifying potassium channels remain open. Meanwhile, the opening of more inwardly rectifying potassium channels, IK1, allows efflux of potassium, which leads to a negative change in membrane potential. This net outwardly positive current causes the cell to repolarize. The delayed rectifier potassium channels, or IK, closes when the membrane potential is restored to about minus 80 to minus 85 millivolts which is represented in the lower window by the green dot. Phase four is re-established due to rectifying potassium channels, IK1, remaining open to allow potassium to leave the cell. The action potential of slow response fibers will now be reviewed. These slow response fibers are found primarily in the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodal fibers. This graph illustrates the phases of the action potential within the SA node. The SA node is the primary pacemaker within the heart. Since slow response fibers lack functioning fast channels, they depolarize slower, causing a slower conduction of the action potential across the SA nodal fibers. These cells have no true resting potential, 
Instead, they generate regular spontaneous action potentials. Sinoatrial nodal action potentials are divided into three phases. Phase four starts at the end of repolarization, when the membrane potential is at its most negative, about minus 60 millivolts. Let's visualize what happens at the cell membrane level during this phase, which is also represented graphically in the small window. Funny channels, labeled here as IF, open to allow the influx of sodium. This reverses the membrane potential. Therefore, this reversal of transmembrane voltage causes the cell to reach its threshold for spontaneous depolarization. Let's proceed to the next phase. Phase zero is the depolarization phase of the action potential. It is caused by a net influx of calcium via the L-type calcium channels. This is followed by repolarization within phase three. During this phase, a rapid efflux of potassium occurs via delayed rectifying potassium channels, IK. Once the cell is completely repolarized at about minus 60 millivolts, as seen on the graph, the cycle repeats spontaneously. Antiarrhythmic drugs are used to restore normal rhythm and conduction. They directly or indirectly alter membrane ion conductance, thus altering the physiology of cardiac action potentials. We will first review the class one antiarrhythmic drugs. Let's take a closer look at the ventricular wall and zoom in on a cardiac cell. Sodium channels open during phase zero to allow influx of sodium into the cell, resulting in depolarization. Class I antiarrhythmic drugs are sodium channel blockers. They bind to and block the fast sodium channels. The steep slope of phase zero depends on the rapid influx of sodium through fast sodium channels. Blocking these channels thus decreases the slope of phase zero. The amplitude of the action potential is therefore also decreased. In addition to decreasing the slope of phase zero, Sodium channel blockers alter the duration of the action potential, and thus, the effective refractory period, or ERP. This is the period of time when a new action potential cannot be initiated. Class I drugs can be divided into three subgroups, each with a different effect on the effective refractory period. Class IA drugs, such as quinidine and procanamide, increase the effective refractory period. Class 1B drugs, such as lidocaine, decrease the effective refractory period. Class 1C drugs, such as fleconide, have no effect on the effective refractory period. Let's now proceed to the next class of antiarrhythmic drugs. Class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs. Let's take a closer look at the ventricular wall and zoom in on a myocyte to show the action of the class II drugs. Under normal conditions, norepinephrine binds to beta-1 adrenoreceptors on myocytes. Beta receptors are G protein receptors, coupled to GS proteins, which activate adenyl cyclase to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP then activates protein kinase A which then phosphorylates L-type calcium channels. This causes them to open and increase calcium entry into the cell from T tubules. The calcium that enters the cell attaches to ryanidine receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, causing the release of stored calcium. Calcium ions then diffuse from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm, ready to bind troponin of myofibrils. These events contribute to increased contractility of the heart, also known as inotropy. Class II agents are beta blockers, such as atenolol, propranolol, and metoprolol. They act by binding to beta-1 adrenergic receptors, blocking norepinephrine, and thus inhibiting normal sympathetic activity on the heart.
Therefore, beta blockers decrease heart rate, contractility, and conduction velocity. Let's proceed to the next class of antiarrhythmic drugs. Class three antiarrhythmic drugs, such as amiodarone, are potassium channel blockers. By blocking these channels, they prevent the efflux of potassium during repolarization. This graph illustrates the effect of class three drugs. Class three drugs prolong phase three without altering phase zero, thereby prolonging the effective refractory period. Class four antiarrhythmic drugs such as verapamil and deltiazem, are slow calcium channel blockers. By blocking these channels, these drugs decrease the influx of calcium, thus slowing the rate of spontaneous depolarization during phase zero of slow response fibers such as SA and AV nodal fibers.